Hey folks, here's a quick infographic on the Christchurch earthquake that happened in New Zealand um, in 2011. This is a high income country and you can use it in paper one. Now, I'm really fond of this country, I actually went and spent six months there, uh, living, surfing, just travelling and I did go to Christchurch but it was in 2005 so a little bit earlier. Uh, I was really shocked when I saw what happened. So it happened on the 22nd of February 2011. That's the date you're looking for. Another useful bit of data is it was a 7.1 magnitude quake. Now that's a big earthquake, but the really big issue with it was the depth of it. It was only five kilometers down. So um, if you just put five kilometers depth, that means, you know, it's about 3.1 miles, you know, lower than the uh, epicenter. So really, really close. And it lasted 10 seconds. And it's quite astonishing what happened in those 10 seconds. So when we start to look at some of the impacts, 185 people died. Uh, and this was mainly, I think about 80% of these were in buildings collapsing. Uh, we had 2,000 people um, injured, so that's from like falling debris um, and other injuries, and 22,000, so a much bigger number of people, um, people were moved to what we call like temporary accommodation or a temporary housing. Now remember this is a high income country, they're not, not short of money at all, the quality of life and living standards there are really good, so they did have the funds with which to deal with this problem. Now in terms of infrastructure, 100,000 properties, I'll just draw building and write properties, so this is everything from homes to businesses, uh, were damaged. 100,000 in one city. Now, just changing that number slightly, 10,000, okay, so 10%, well, sorry, smaller number, um, were demolished. That means they just had to be completely demolished and got rid of, okay. Um, sadly, because these buildings were damaged and because they were getting demolished, that actually meant that one in five people uh, lost their jobs. So, you know, if I was there and I and the school I was working in was demolished, I would have lost my job. If I was working in a shop, I could have lost my job. So one in five people lost their jobs due to buildings being destroyed. And this obviously had quite a big impact on the economy. Um, in total, this is another big number that you're going to want, 40 billion, with a B, not, not an M, 40 billion um, dollars in damages to infrastructure. Now, if you're not good with that word infrastructure, it basically refers to buildings or roads it's any public areas that could be damaged everything from a traffic light you know something small like that through to uh, an entire hospital um so 40 billion dollars there now we'll start to look at what happened as we move our way around this little speech bubble um i love this fact i think it's really heartwarming 300 um draw a little person um, Australian, so Australia is their nearest uh, neighbour, uh, police, okay, so these are Australian police, flew in, so they came straight over on planes, and they were given basically police powers, so they were kind of sworn in uh, and made like official New Zealand police to basically help the New Zealand residents. Okay, so that's, you know, helping support people who are going through, it's just such a traumatic event. Um, something else they did, and I think, you know, this was really just 
to take the pressure off everybody but um schools so all schools were closed uh not for one or two days but for two weeks and then as soon as they felt they could get that up and running again they did now even though it's a high income country and it has money and it has good resources this was a huge shock to their economy and i think it supposed to take 50 to 100 years for them to recover um so they did seek aid and they got six to seven uh, million dollars in aid from sort of overseas countries and you know charities like the red cross came in to help because you know when we're looking at you know 2,000 injured people many dead many people being moved you need people on hand who are used to dealing with these kind of disasters um but the, the yeah the new zealand government were were doing an awful lot to help but they did need support um they also had rescue uh, rescue crews rescue crews from the uk so there's actually um a team of people in the uk and i think i know for a fact there's some in portsmouth who are flown to these disasters uh, to help along with people from the USA and obviously Australia um, and they're they're just trained in this so they just are put on a plane and taken to wherever they need to go to support. Now two more things that happened. Um, water and surge pipes were completely broken by the earthquake so they needed to fix those. Now I was quite surprised because obviously it's a high income country I thought these might have been fixed relatively quickly, but obviously they're all underground. The red water and sewage pipes were uh, were fixed by August. Now that happened in February, so February, March, April, May, June, July, August. That's six months without running water or sewage working sewage systems. So that's quite oh, that's quite shocking. Put an exclamation mark there. Um, and then lastly, the last thing that happened was the government used some of their finances to build 10,000 new, draw home, uh, and these were affordable, because remember people have lost their jobs, there's a lot of problems with money in the country at the time, so 10,000 new affordable homes were built. And that was by the government. Obviously, they get their money back by selling them. But yeah, there's a quick, quick bit on the impacts um, and the effects and some of the short and long term responses.